Good afternoon, guys. Welcome back to the channel. Let's talk Leeds. Hope you're all doing well. The weather's a bit better today. Well, it is down here on the south coast anyway. Hopefully it is where you are as well, wherever you're watching from. Um, so, yes, we take on Nottingham Forest tomorrow in our fourth pre-season friendly. Um, obviously, lost to Man United 2-0, smashed Barnsley 9-1 and lost to Monaco 2-0. Um, new season's 12 days away now. Um, so yeah, we're getting we're getting to the um, home straight, if you like, before the season starts. We take on Forest um, Thursday, and we take on uh, Hearts on Sunday. And then that's it. It's, it's time to rock and roll. Um, we're just going to get into what I think the starting lineup will be. Uh, it's not what I necessarily want it to be, but it's it's what I think it will be. Um, the, mind you, the last one I think I got seven or eight right out of the eleven, so it wasn't a bad effort. Uh, obviously, it's pre-season and because we've got a game Sunday, we might see um, two completely different starting teams. Um, we're going to get into a couple of things that I'd like to see improved on from the last game and a couple of things I'd like us to do more of that we've done well in the last game. So without further ado, it's going to get up what I think the um, starting lineup will be. Um, again, I don't think th this is not what I would like it to be. I'd make it slightly different, but I'm just going to talk about going to break it down and talk about it. So in goal, I think it will be Meslier. Now, I know we're signing Carl Darlow and it looks like Meslier's time's up, but we need to put him in the shot window a bit, in my opinion. Um, listen, no, no, it doesn't look like many people were interested in him. And um, we heard him sort of uh, twerking for Chelsea a bit, saying he wants to be their number one and that. That's not going to happen, I'm afraid, mate. Not on your performances from last season. I love Meslier and it's a shame how it's 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 he's declined like this because um, what was only a couple of years ago, I thought he was going to be um, France's number one goalkeeper in a few years' time and he's just fallen off a cliff a bit. So I'd like him to leave on loan so we can, so we can um, have him back again someday. Um, get have a year's um, a year of a good season, and then uh, he he may be number one for Leeds again. But yeah, we need to put him in the shop window a bit. Um, I understand, you know, class and maybe back up, so he needs some minutes in the bank. But I think I'm assuming they'll probably swap at half time anyway. Um, Ailing right back, I think. I think um, I think Ailing done all right against Monaco. I've never been Ailing's biggest fan, but I think he got forward well, and he's a bit suspect defensively. But I'm hoping next season we won't be doing as much defending. So that might not be sort of exposed as much. Um, Pascal Strelkin, right centre back for me. I think he done brilliant the other day. Um, everything you want from a defender. Got got in front of the attacker, passed the ball out well, calm, assured. One is one is aerial duels. I think Strelk had a brilliant performance. And I think Daniel Farco, I want to see more of him. Um <clears throat> before the season opener against Cardiff. Uh, Liam Cooper, left centre-back. Um, again, did all right. Um, we're going to have to see a bit more of Cresswell, but we'll get more uh, into that more in a minute. I think left-back, I think he's going to start with Byron. I think uh, Leo Yelder, he done all right, a sort of average performance, but I feel like Byron offered a little bit more when he come on. And also that was in a period of the game where we were really up against it and under the cosh. So, I think Daniel Farkle will want to see a bit more of Byram. Um, obviously, he's still got to prove his fitness before we sign him. If we do sign him, I think it'll just be a one-year deal. But I don't think we're going to do that until um, until we see uh, and, until he proves his fitness a bit more. So I, I think I think Byram could start at left back. Um, again, this could be wrong. Like we could easily see Drama at right back, Leo Yelder at left back, but. Uh, this is just what I think. Um, I think we're going to see Ampadu there again. Obviously, probably man of the match last game. Absolute boss it in the middle there. Calm, assured, aggressive in a tackle. Um, played some good balls out wide. You know, tidied up, mopped up. He, he All-round complete performance from Ampadu. And I, I think he'll, uh, Farquhar, want to see, um, want to keep that up for him going into the season. Uh, last week, we uh, last week, last game, we saw uh, Archie Gray partner in Ampadu. Um, and Archie Gray actually had a really good performance, but I think Farquhar will want to see a bit more of Darko JB. So I, I think it could be JB to start this game, but whoever starts out the two, I think the other one will start against Hart. So it could be Archie Gray, it could be JB, but I, I think it could be JB to start this one. Um, going forward, um, now, 
on the left, it could be Nonto, could be Somerville. We know that. But I think Dan James had, had a real decent performance, to be fair. Um, we didn't set the world alight. Uh, get up against a good Monaco side, but I don't think Forrester are sort of on Monaco's level, so I think it might be a bit, it's still a hard game, but I think it'll be a bit more of an easier game. Um, I, I'd like to see da Dan James start again. I've got a feeling he's really um, in, in Daniel Farker's plans for the season, and I think we're going to see a lot of Dan James next season, so I'd like him there. Uh, Nonto looked a bit sort of rusty when he came on, um, obviously gave away the penalty. He looks a bit frustrated for me. I, I don't know. Obviously, N Nonto will feature and so will Somerville. Um, but yeah, I think we're going to start with Dan James. Um, Sinistera on the right. If if we can get 30 games out of Sinistera next season, he will he will set records. I'm, I'm convinced of that. Um, yeah, I think he looked a bit rusty the other day, but that's sort of to be expected in pre-season friendly. Rustiness, sloppiness. You know, that's what they're there for, to sort of, um, get get rid of that before the season starts. So I think um, we'll see Sinister Stara, uh start there. Um, in the 10 role, Joe Gelhart, I, again, I think he's done all right. Um, I think he looks good. I think he looks fresh and I think he looks up for it. I think, I think he's, I think he's, you know, looks determined to try and push his way into, into the team. Whether he will or not, I don't know, but I, I, I think there's a chance Gelhart starts in the 10 and up front, Ruta, listen, I don't want Ruta up front. He's a winger, in my opinion. Um, I think we'll all, we'll all, we, you know, we're all agreed on that. And even Daniel Farker, when he came through the door, he said he see, sort of sees Ruta as a, a winger. But Patrick Bamford looked awful the other day when he came on. I mean, you know, the thing is, we've really got no one to play there. So it's going to be Ruta or Bamford for me. And I think he's going to start with Ruta. You know, we saw Ruta drifting out wide, which we'll get onto in a second. But um, yeah, I think it will just be Ruta up front until we until we get a clinical number nine, a.k.a. Joel Perot. Hopefully that gets moving soon because I, I do believe we're going to, I think we're going to go for Joel Perot. But um, that's a conversation for a different time. Um, so going back to Charlie Creswell, um, he sort of, holding back on signing a new a new deal um until he sees what Leeds plans are for him I sort of that's sort of what I can gauge from it um he does want to be here but he wants to see what sort of role he wants to play and on the other side of the coin I don't think Leeds want to offer him a new deal and commit to him long term until we see a bit more of him because obviously he was in and out of the Millwall team uh so you know that sort of tells a bit of its own story to me however he he um, was part of the under Euros under twenty one side who, who'd done so well. So it's a tricky one with Cresswell. You know he sh ideally should just slot in here, but Pascal Strauk did brilliant the other day. So I think Farker will start with Strauk and then swap with Cresswell. Um, start with Byram, swap with Yeldas, start with Ailing, swap with Drame. Um, it, obviously it's a friendly. There's going to be a lot of changes. I think we'll see Somerville around here. Um, we we'll, we might see Nonto in here. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's going to be a lot, a lot of change in. Uh, Bamford will probably come on at some point. Um, although I've seen a few people saying that they think Bamford's injured because he wasn't in any of the photo shoots and stuff. Um, yeah, I, I think Bamford's time's, time's done. But, you know, that, that's not a conversation for now. Um, but I do think um, Bamford's time is, is done. So... Yeah, I think Rutter's going to start. Ruta, sorry, I would say Rutter. I think Ruta's going to start. Um, and I was going to get into the more tactical side of things for this game and things that we did well in the last game, which I want to see us do again in the next game. Now, I'm not really 100% sure on not not in the Forest formation. Um, I spoke to a good friend of mine, Jamie Martin, who's a not in the Forest correspondent. Um, he seems to think it will either be a five. 2 2 1 or a 5 2 1 2. Uh, we know we'll probably start with a 4 2 3 1. Um, so uh, it could be, could, could get uh, quite crowded in the middle here, and it looks like Nottingham Forest might try and box that out. And we know traditionally um, Daniel Farker likes to box out the middle and then get the ball out wide. So yeah, it, 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 it could be an interesting. If they do start a lineup like that, it would be quite interesting. Obviously, they've got five at the back, but you'll see the full backs 
a sort of marauding forward, I suspect, to give them a bit of width. And if it's a 5 2 1 2, it will look a bit like this with him picking up a bit of space there. Um, so, things I'd like us to do what we did last game, um, what I thought we'd done really well. What I really liked was when Ailing was bombing on forward. We had uh, Archie Gray covering him there, which which gives him a bit of freedom, which also means the eight, uh, not the eight, but the, the the right winger can push on forward. So I think we'll see a, a bit more of a bit more of that this game. And um, you know what's interesting is that in that game against Monaco, we sort of saw it down the right, but not down the left so much. So um, it's a bit of like a tactical, calculated, unbalanced attack where you sort of do it down one wing. But in my opinion, it'd be nice to switch it up. So I'd like, you know, if we, if Byram or Leo Yelder are bombing up down there, it'd be nice to see uh, Ampadu covering there. And what we did see well from Ampadu is, you know, he he, he uses the space he's got brilliantly. So um, when, when Meslier's got the ball here, we'll see, I think it'll be a 5 2 2 1. So we'll see him pushing up and then them not the forest attackers covering that space. So we need Byram or Hialdo or Drama or Ailing to be really wide to, to receive the ball. And then either the winger can drop there or he can come there. There's got to be options for the press. We've got to beat the press well. We saw we did see good signs of it actually against Monaco. We saw we saw us booting the press pretty well. Um and what better way to, to get used to it than in a pre-season friendly when the you know the mistakes aren't as important? Um, so yeah, it'd be nice. To, it might be nice to see uh, more width, and I think we will um, going forward. Um, we saw a lot of uh, Rutter when he was up front. We we saw a lot of uh, we saw a lot of him drifting out there, and then Dan James sort of going there. And I was I was a big fan of that. And also when. Uh, Ruta did did do that. Um, Sinistera uh, sort of gauged the fact that it's going to come his way, and he, he sort of made this run here. Obviously, the fullbacks will be higher occupying them formations. So, yeah, we, we, I, I want to see it. There, there's signs in the last game. I mean, at full time, I was feeling a little bit mad, but there was a lot of signs in the first game that I like the look of. Um, and I hope that we we continue that, especially with the new season being so close away. I'd like us to see us sort of implement that again, because if you keep getting into, into the good habits, then it will sort of rub off onto the season. Um, in, so I sort of p highlighted some things I want to see in the next game that we've done really well in the last game. Pascal Strauch, who hopefully will be in this position, Um any aerial duels, straight away, bang, he was there. Straight there to get it. He got the ball here. He looked forward. If there wasn't a pass on, he was happy to go back to Melier um, and then sort of recycle the ball. I felt Strelk had a really good game. Um, he was commanding. He, he was he was really um, assertive on the ball. So I think we're going to see a bit, hopefully see a bit more of that from Strelk. Um, in the left-back position, Um Leo Yelder sort of got into these positions quite often. And rather than going forward, I feel like he turned back quite a bit. Um, whereas Byram, I feel feel like, looked to get forward a bit. He put a, a lovely uh, cross in with his left foot. Uh, no one was in there to get on the end of it. But I'd like to see Leo, Leo Yelder be a bit more attacking rather than just turning back all the time. Because there's a couple of times where we beat the press and their players were literally like this, right? Like this, proper pushed up. And we got the ball out with a risky pass, got it to Yelder. He got here and, you know, we've got an overload. And rather than going forward with the overload, he sort of turned back. This gives them a chance to reshape and get back into position. It sort of kills the attack. Obviously, that will come with confidence for, for Yelder, but I would like to see a bit more of that. Um, Ampadu, oh, hopefully we see another complete performance from him. Assertive on the ball. Tidied up well, aggressive in the tackle, broke up the play, switched it out wide. So I'm hoping we see more of that. Dan James, I think he looked really lively. I've seen people with a difference of opinion, which is fine. It's subjective. It's football. But I think Dan James looked really lively. I think I think he took on his full back well. I think he got some good crosses in. Okay, not all of them were good. We know his final delivery is not always up to it. But if you know if he is going to do that, we need to see Bamford or Rutter here ready to. to 
to, to be to be a killer instinct finisher and get the ball in. So I'd like to see a bit more of Dan James out there, and that's why I think Farker will start with him because I think Farker likes Dan James. Um, I'd like to see that um, Chris pass him. So first half, I felt like we were really good. We were quite fluid. Um, we broke out well. We passed the ball well, and then I think in the final third. It just it, it died a death, you know. It feels like we pierced through the heart but never killed. Um, I'd like this game to be a bit more of a complete performance um, uh, in the final third. And then that, that, that will come and then that will create more chances. So I'd like to see a bit more of a complete performance over the 90 minutes as well. Because I feel like first half, I went in at half time against Monaco and I was like, do you know what? I'm very happy with that. I think we've done really well. And then it just sort of died a bit of a death. You know, last 20 minutes, I think we sort of ran out of gas and, you know, you can see the fitness kicking in, but I feel like we just tailed off and sort of the uh, full-time whistle couldn't come soon enough. Um, I'd also like to see a bit more of a a better performance from Cresswell when he does get his chance. Obviously, he's hoping for a new contract. I think that's only going to come if he sort of shows a bit more of what he can do because I feel feel like he was a bit sloppy in in that game when he came on. Uh, I don't know what you lot think, get your comments in the section below, but I feel like Cresswell was a little bit sloppy. Um, and for the goal, everyone was blaming Meslier. I'm not sure if it was Meslier's fault. Uh, you know, I, I'll sort of go through it. So the winger came from here. I don't think Byram done enough to close him down. Uh, the, per- uh, the the attacker, was it Yedda? No. Yeah, was it Yedda? I'm not sure. But the, but the Monaco player who scored the header... Come across Charlie Cresswell, who is really flat-footed. The ball comes in across there. Mezier is off his line. So I think By- Byron was to blame. I think Cresswell was definitely to blame. He didn't do enough to, to... If he can't get to the ball, jump, shout, put the attacker off, getting a clear header. Get in his head, then he won't have a clear header. And obviously, but Mezier is off his line. I don't know. We, we see Mezier off his line a lot, but hopefully we're going to see Cardalo in the future. So we haven't got to worry about that too much, but... Yeah, I feel like Creswell's got a bit to prove, not a lot, got a bit to prove before he sort of cements his place in the centre-back role. Um, we need to see more shots on target. We had, we had one shot on target in that game. And that was um, that was right at the end of the game. We need to have more shots on target. Sort of, we, We're sort of getting the ball around this sort of area. And, it, and then, you know, it's just one pass too many and it just fizzled out and then the other team broke. Um, yeah, we need to have more shots on target. Whether that shot's outside the box, so be it. Like, just get your shot off because you're not going to... It's so, so cliche, but you're not going to score if you don't shoot. So we've got to get more shots off. Um, so, yeah, um, I'm looking forward to it, guys. Um, I think I'm really looking forward to it. I think... Uh, we're, go- we're going to see a lot more um, Farker ball as the games go on. We see, I think we'll see a lot more against Hearts that we do against Forest tomorrow. And I, see if, I think we'll see a lot more tomorrow than what we saw against Monaco. Um, the, the, you know, the, the formation I chose isn't the one that I necessarily would like. But I do think we're going to see a lot of Dan James next season. Um, I don't think Dan James is a brilliant player, but I think he's got a role to play in the championship. Um I'd like to see a bit more Gelhart. Somerville looked lively against Monaco, but I think we need to see a bit more from him. Um, Ailing looked decent, but also I want to see Drame. So it's going to be an interesting one, and I am looking forward to it. Um, my starting lineup could be horrifically wrong, but yeah, let me know in the comments below what you think the starting lineup would be, what you would like to see different from the Monaco game, what you'd like to see improvements made from the Monaco game, what you'd like to see us continue against Forrest that we did well in the Monaco game. Because, listen, guys, we're 12 days out, you know. Um, so we've got to get some sort of cohesion going. So I know friendly, you want to see different players like Bate and uh, Matteo Joseph and that. But at the same time, we need to get these players gelled. We need to, we need to see them um, get, getting used to playing with, with each other again. Because, you know, most of them, their confidence shot to pieces from last season. You know, Cooper, Melier, Ailing. All these players who who were used to getting hammered last season, they, they need a bit of confidence. And um, obviously, we saw Daniel Farker say he would have liked to have seen a couple of easier games in there, which I get. I know 
we smashed Barnsley 9-1, but you don't really learn a lot from that. You know, it'd have been nice to see a couple of games against, um, I don't know, championship sides. And I guess Nottingham Forest is sort of a not a bad, uh, not a bad friendly to have at Anhart. So I think in these two games, we'll see a bit more of Farker ball because against Man United, against Monaco, we've sort of been pinned up against it, uh, backed against the ropes, um, trying to to get out of the press. And I think next season we're, we're going to see a, we're going to see more of us with the ball attacking. So we want to see that in some friendlies. We want to see what we're we're like when we've got the ball and not just when our backs to uh, to the rope. So it's going to be an interesting one, guys. But get get your comments in the section below. You know what you think the starting lineup will be, and like I said, what you'd like to see improve from from the last game. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. And um, I, I shall see you. I may, maybe later. I might do another video later. You know, sort of reacting to breaking news and that. But thanks for your support, guys. I read all the comments, reply to everyone, like, comment, and subscribe. And I shall see you again soon.